child tries to understand it, tries to make her proud. The shade goes down, it's in her head, painted room, can't deny the song fell wrong. Don't call me daughter, not fit to the picture, cat will remind me. Don't call me daughter, not fit to the picture, cat will remind me. Don't call me. Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Daughters by Pearl Jam. Love this tune, love this band. It brings back so many wonderful memories of my teenage years and learning guitar. Weirdly, I never learnt this one. I learned loads of other stuff off this record, but uh, not this particular tune till about an hour ago. Uh, really interesting one. It's in open G tuning with a different bass note. The thicker string is tuned differently as well. So uh, if you're not familiar with open G, it's relatively simple. You tune the thinnest string down to a D. So you use the fourth string as a reference and then just tune that the thinner string down. Then you t tune the fifth string down to a G. You can use the third string as a reference for that. Tune that one down to a G. And then this string, the thicker string, you tune up to a G. So actually the, the thicker string and the fifth string are tuned to the same note. Really interesting thing. If you know anything about open G tuning, you know that the fifth string is the root note. That's the note G. Usually in a standard open G, you tune the thicker string down to a D, but then it, it doesn't get used a whole lot, which is why uh, Keith Richards had his famous five string telecast. It was tuned to open G, tuning that one. So uh, yeah, really interesting uh, way around is just tuning that note up to the G, very clever. Um, there's only really two sections to this tune. You're gonna have to listen to the record to get exactly uh, the right order of all of the parts, but it shouldn't be too difficult if you just give it a listen. So let's get to a close up, and check out how to play it. First riff is this. Now what I'm going to do is show you the chord, discuss the fingering, but then we're going to break it right down into looking at the rhythm and the chord changes, a, kind of a simplified rhythm, and then we're going to add the fancy rhythm parts in afterwards. It's definitely a lot easier to learn a song like this by breaking it down like that. You'll see as we go along, but I'd try and check out the methodology here as well, because you might find it helpful to apply that to any other songs where the rhythm is a little bit uh, tricky or the chord changes and the rhythm are a little bit awkward. A song like this, particularly singing it and playing it at the same time, is a bit of a pig. So you definitely want to get make sure that your rhythm is real tight and solid, first of all. So the chord shape, first of all, we start with the first finger down in the fifth fret of the fifth string. And then third finger is going down in the seventh fret of the fourth string. You might find it easier to use your little finger there. Tell the truth, my little finger is fractured right now. It really hurts to use it. So I'm gonna be using my third finger all the way through. I would generally probably have preferred to use my little finger if it was functioning properly. I would recommend that you try both and find whichever one is easier for you. So this shape, you can see we can strum all of the strings here all of the way through. Note this first time, it's just a quick slide from 5th to 7th fret. And I'm really counting that as a beat, so it's 1, 2 and 3 and 4. 1, 2 and 3 and 4. 1, 2 and 3 and 4. And 1, 2 and 3, 4. So it's here, 1, 2 and 3 and 4. Really important that you get that rhythm. One, two and three and four. One, two and three and four. Just to use your first finger. Easy enough to add the other finger later. Two and three and four. One, two and three and four. That's the first bar. The second bar, instead of going back to the fifth fret, it drops down to the open. One, two and three and four. Okay, it does that for the third bar as well. So you end up with first bar, one, two and three and four. Second bar, one, two and three and four. Third bar, one, two and three and four. And the fourth bar, we have 
one, two, and three, four. So the fifth fret on the uh, fifth fret chord will be played three times on beat one, two, and three, four. They will all take down picks. All of these so far are all down strums. Okay, so let's play that same thing, same simplified rhythm, but with the whole chord down now as well. So we end up with this one, two, and three, and four. strongly recommend that you get that down first of all. Just keep the strumming real simple, all down strums. All down strums are really important. Once you feel confident with that, you want to try and get your strumming hand moving as eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and that motion, right? You're not going to strum the strings all the time, but that's the hand, the, the timing of the hand motion. It wants to be real consistent. Then try again to do the same thing. All the chords will be falling on the down strums, but you want to keep that hand moving. So you end up with one, two and That is the key thing. If you can do that, then you'll be able to move on to the next stage, which is adding all of these. But it's not really a super set pattern here. So if you get the accents and you can do this, though. Start with that. And then see if you can get it. that my hand's still just moving exactly the same as if I go now with the extras There's a whole heap of other more subtle stuff, which is really, really difficult for me to explain about which strums are louder than others. The ones that I've showed you as a broken down thing are the ones that are accented. And when it goes to the open strings, normally you wouldn't strum immediately after it. So you kind of let that one ring a little bit more. Trying to explain the minutiae of that is really difficult for me to teach and really difficult for you to understand. So start with that simplified strumming pattern, Get used to it, make it feel good, make sure your hand is moving consistently, and then just try and add in those extra strums. Doing a little bit slower is good. Too much slower is a little bit like trying to ride a bike too slow. You start to feel a little bit wobbly. So you might slow it down to like... Um Probably not too much slower than that. I'll give you a little word of warning here. Some of the, if you're going to sing over it, uh, particularly for me anyway, the line the mother reads aloud, the child tries to understand, that is just like really, I found it really, really difficult to sing that over the top of the riff. I had to like super concentrate and I'm still not sure I'm getting it right because it's it's like, you know, the what is it? T tapping your belly and rubbing your head thing. Or whatever. It's just like, oh my God, this is all not working for me. Uh, it is pretty tricky. It'd be fine if somebody else was singing, but if you're going to sing yourself, you really need to get that riff as automated as you can if you're going to try and sing over it. Um, the arrangement of it is also interesting because it plays through that kind of four-bar sequence uh, three times, and then the l very last time the shades go down before it goes into this other section, uh, it just does that second bar one more time. So the shades go down. That little part so it's just the same as the second bar so going to the open strings on that one 
Let's have a look at this uh, B section now. So your third finger is already used to, or your little finger if you're using your little finger, your third finger is already used to being on the fourth string. So that's going to slide up to the twelfth fret. And first finger is going to bar the ninth fret. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but I've, I feel like I can hear the thinner strings ringing out as well. It does sound like live sometimes, it's a bit more just the thicker strings. And basically, the third finger is moving down. It's kind of a bit of a bow diddly rhythm. So, one E and a two and three E and four. Down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. So getting into that, it's the shades go down. It's in her head. Painted room, can't deny there's something wrong. Don't call me daughter. It's the same as the verse, the same chords, the same four bar sequence. Don't call me daughter. Don't So we've got again that little uh, one bar, the same as the second bar, going to the open strings. Don't call me, and then we're back to this. There's a little bit of an instrumental break there on that B section. Uh, I think it plays the riff one time, and then it goes back into this with one of the most beautiful uh, lines. Eddie Vedder, incredible lit writer. She holds the hand that holds her down. What a line. What a line that is. Yeah, genius. Anyway, uh, so that uh, listening, uh, getting the rest of the arrangement of the song is just going to be about you having a listen to it. It's, it's not particularly difficult to hear it, uh, and you might want to change it up. There's a lot of repetition in the song later on, so a lot of it will be down to how you, you're feeling it. I notice when Pearl Jam play it live, sometimes they extend sections. They use this one as kind of a sing-along-y thing. It's a great jam tune. You can just jam out on it in G. I nearly forgot to mention the intro. The very intro is just this up down on the E and the and after beat four. So you have one, two, three, four. And. I mean, it's only probably applicable if you're playing in a band, but that, that will be the count. So one, two, three, four, up, down, one. Okay, let me take you through a slightly slowed down no vocal one so give you a good close up on what's going on. So one, two, three, four. I really hope you enjoyed checking out this song. Loads more Pearl Jam songs over on the website. I really hope you enjoy them and that you're having a fantastic day. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You'll take care of yourselves out there. Bye-bye.